Welcome, my name is Vishal Tekshanani. Today I'm speaking to Peter Coleman, the Chief Executive Officer of Woodside Petroleum, and we're going to focus on the company's 2017 results, as well as the acquisition and capital raising they've announced. Peter, great to have you here. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So Peter, a lot's been said in the media about the acquisition, the capital raising, but before we step into that, uh, can you talk through the 2017 results? Were you happy with the results, and what were the highlights for Woodside? Well, very happy with the results on, on a number of factors. Uh, the, uh, the outcome really came down the middle of the fairway for us. We had some challenges early in the year on our production as we had some uh, cy cyclones go through the facilities. There are always challenges for us yeah. up in the, the northwest. But if you look at the profit outcome, it really came in right down the middle of the fairway. Uh, tremendous for us, so it, it means then we can maintain our payout ratio on yep. our dividend. And of course, cost out of the business stayed down. So the good thing for us is you, know, you always worry when you've been through a, a cost reduction mm -hmm. exercise, is it going to stay in the business or out of the business? And of course, we've been able to keep it out. Okay, so let's move on to the big ticket item, which is the $2.5 billion capital raising you've announced. And so some of those proceeds are going to be used to acquire a 50% additional interest in Scarborough. So one of our content partners, Intelligent Investor, commented that the capital raising has come as a surprise given your underlying business is, quote, seemingly firing beautifully, unquote. So can you illuminate investors on why you felt there was the need to launch this entitlement issue? And what is, this, what is it that you see in this field? Well, it's a, it's a good question because the the statement about the underlying business is, is factually correct. If you look at what we were able to achieve last year, uh, we were basically balanced in our business. We were able to invest another $1.5 billion in growth projects going forward, and that's US dollars. Uh, and then, of course, we were able to pay our dividends and not draw down on our debt at all. So you can see even at last year's oil prices, we were very balanced in our business. That, that's good for us and it's good for shareholders because it gives them some sense of surety then that that payout ratio, that dividend, can get paid into the future. We then had this real opportunity to change the face of Woodside, to, to change us from being following the pack or having to rely on others for our destiny, so to speak, and be able to acquire a significant portion of Scarborough. Now, what Scarborough does is it unlocks the Carnarvon Basin for us. So we set that aside and we said, my goodness, what happens? We've got a tremendous business generating cash flow, uh, but over here we've got a lot of capital we need to spend. Let's separate the two. So the capital raising really is about growth for us. And we have a tremendous growth profile in front of us already out through 2021, 20, yep. But now Scarborough's going to come in around that 2025, browse not long after that. So we got ourselves ready for this capital phase. Okay, and what's the risk of this acquisition? Because several analysts have remarked this is, that this is a very technically challenging field to develop. Well, in, in fact, it used to be. Uh, you can go back 30 years and yes, it was distant from shore and, and yes, the gas had a low heating value and so forth. That's just not true today. So we need to kind of get some of that analyst world up to current world for the oil and gas industry. It's in 950 metres of water depth. I'm drilling wells off West Africa in more than 2,700 metres of water depth. Woodside drills more wells in Australia than any other company. So it's very much within the fairway of what we do. It's 400 kilometres offshore. That's half the distance of the Ichthyus project from Darwin. And of course, half the distance that Browse will come down to Karatha. So we look at that and we say they're very doable things and things that we can cost into the business. Of course, the real beauty of this particular project is we're able to use our Pluto facility. Uh, investors may recall that a number of years ago we invested in Pluto with a view that it would be at least three trains and potentially five. Unfortunately, we didn't find enough gas and we had to stop at one. But we invested in those facilities. We invested in the site, we invested in the tanks and the jetties and so forth. So we've got all that spare capacity there doing nothing. The Scarborough project now utilises that capacity, so it basically comes free for Woodside investors. So there's synergy there? There's tremendous synergies there for us, and so we're able to take advantage of that. And we've got a site there that then is de-risk. You know, people will ask us, well, how do you manage risk? How do you manage this construction risk? It's fundamentally different. We've got a prepared site. We don't need to do any of the civil works. We don't need to build any of these other things. The site itself is already there. The site has already been prepared and we have the environmental approvals for it. So we've got many of those things that were risk factors that often hold up these projects are actually already dealt with. 
Okay, so let's move on to Woodside's capital allocation strategy over the next three to five years. What kind of a company is Woodside going to be? Can shareholders, for example, look forward to more capital raisings like this? Or are you going to look to return more income, potential special dividends and buybacks as earnings flow through from everything that you're doing? Well, all of that, of course, is predicated on where oil price uh, goes over that period of time. But what we've done on this particular capital raising is looked at two boundary conditions. We've said if oil price stays at $65 per barrel, what does it look like? And then if oil price goes down to $50 per barrel, what does it look like? So the capital raising itself allows us to get through that period. We've said short to medium term, uh, really beyond three years. Uh, for, from a funding point of view. And it says, look, if oil price does drop, we can continue with our capital projects. So investors are not worried, look, is Woodside now going to come and ask us for money? Do they have enough money to continue pursuing their projects? Or conversely, that conversation always goes, will the dividend be cut? And of course, now people have got some surety there that in fact those things will be in place. Now we put a stake in the sand and we said, look, the next time we'll, we'll have a look at this, is probably out around uh, FID or final investment decision for our browse project. Yep. So that's about three years out from now. It's far enough out to give people some comfort that we're not gonna come knocking again uh, next week or next month. Uh, but it's not so far out that we're, we're kind of hanging out a bit loose on our forecasts. So it's about surety. But if oil price stays up, of course, that'll just keep going out further. Okay, so let's delve into the oil price. Um, what is your most recent assessment of the global LNG market? Are supply and de demand dynamics becoming more favourable, less favourable? Favorable? And what are some of the risks on the horizon, for example, North American shale gas producers? Well, we're excited by it because it's starting to play out the way that we hoped it would two years ago. It's always difficult to predict the future and you don't know what is a wish and a hope. Uh, but for us, we put some plans in place two years ago and we said this market's turning. It just needs a couple of catalysts uh, to turn. And of course, one of those catalysts uh, was China changing uh, their policy uh, with respect to fossil fuels. With, and it was not driven by greenhouse gas, it was driven uh, by pollution. And so you saw a tremendous growth in Chinese demand coming through at the end of 2017. We expect that will continue and that growth rate will continue at about 7% out through 2025. But it's not just a China story, it's happening all over the world as new customers now come into the marketplace. And the marketplace by 2020 will be made up of more customers than we've ever had before. And of course, 50% of that market then will be traded on what we call the short to spot market. That's a, that's a tremendous dynamic that's starting to get out there. On the supply side, there is no new supply coming. So we've got this, this big supply demand gap happening about 2021 as the current projects under construction come online through 2018 and then there's nothing else. We have not had uh, final investment decisions in the business through 2017, likely not to have any more in 2018. So as you look at that, there's no new supply coming uh, and the demand is continuing to rise at a rapid pace. It is the preferred fossil fuel. It is the preferred mm. fossil fuel. So we're very excited about where it's going. Excellent. Peter, thank you so much for coming and talking to me and talking to NAB Trade Investors with shareholdings in your company about Woodside and its future growth strategy. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you found this video informative. Please remember, if you're thinking about transacting in Woodside shares or participating in the entitlement issue, it's really important that you do your research, read all the offer documentation, and consider seeking financial advice so you can get the help in making an investment decision that's right for you. My name is Vishal Tekshanani. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.